The city of Hartford is under new management. This week was the first full week for the capital city's new mayor, Pedro Segura. I headed to the city's first council meeting since the change to see what's new. With Pedro Segura's name freshly painted on his new office door, many at City Hall tonight hope the change will be in more than name only. Some who criticized former Mayor Eddie Perez as being overly aggressive are eager to see Segura's style. I do. Just having him as president council, you could see the difference in the listen. He listens to what people have to say, and that just make a lot of difference. A difference for residents and some council members say for the process. Councilman Matt Ritter says while he's reluctant to draw comparisons, he expects Mayor Sagara to focus on city leadership as a team effort, turning off into committee chairs for advice. You'll see as Council Pre Mayor Sagara, see we're still adjusting, I admit, is uh, he worked very close with us in the city council. You'll see a really collaborative relationship. Tonight, the council had to postpone a number of requests and reports that had been initiated by the former mayor, part of the complicated transition since Mayor Perez's conviction on corruption charges and resignation. In the meantime, council members admit there will be some rebuilding to do that'll take more than a fresh coat of paint. When an event like this occurs, um, there is obviously mistrust of public officials, that's actually in general, uh, whether it's local, um, state, or federal. Uh, so you have to overcome that as an elected official to begin with, and I think we're, we will have that issue more so uh, than any other municipality because of what, what has transpired. Here for a closer look at how the changes might play out inside City Hall and outside in Hartford's neighborhoods and businesses is Hartford City Councilman Ken Kennedy and current reporter Jenny Jenna Carlesa, I'm sorry, I was trying to remember City Hall reporter Jenna Carlesa. Thanks, both of you, for being here. Um, Ken, if you could start off talking about, you know, you just said in that story about how you'll, you might have a little bit of a task restoring confidence um, among, you know, your constituents. How might you do that? Um, I don't think there's anything specifically we can do. Um, I think we have to show stability within go in our government. Mm -hmm. um, we will elect new leadership in short order, um, make sure the process of government moves forward, and as Mayor Segarra articulates his agenda, um, uh, that we deliberate in a open manner so that our citizens can actually see government work as, as opposed to what I think sometimes has happened in the past, right. where decisions have been made and, and there wasn't a lot of input into that. I think that's the biggest thing you're going to see is a big difference, that uh, Mayor Segarra's style uh, is very open and consensus building. Right. Uh, to reach a conclusion. Interesting. Jenna, so as you hang out in the City Hall um, hallways, what's your take on how receptive residents are going to be? You know, I mean, there's a regular group who attends these meetings. Um, how easy of a transition do you think it might be for the new mayor? I think the city is looking for change right now, mm -hmm. so he's coming in at a good time. I think he has a lot of standards to live up to. Um, you know, they have been uh, kind of as multiple people have described it, you know, their trust has, has yeah. been violated at this point. So he's got to kind of get things back on track from there. And does he um, have the support uh, in your estimation among, uh, among the council? Yeah, I, yeah. I've, I've heard everything I've seen. Everybody's yeah. been behind him. So. And that's the decision we made when we made him council president. We realized this was a possibility. Uh, and we as council people felt uh, he was the best leader um, to serve the city if this did occur. Right. Um, yes, he has supported the entire council. I don't think there's a single member of council that does not support um, uh, Mayor Segarra and will not be supportive of him in the future. It doesn't mean we're always going to agree with him, um, but that means we're going to work uh, very closely, and, and I, that's just everything he's ever s done as a council person, even as corporation yeah, council, you will. Um, you, you that he worked with everyone. Does he have um, any like pet projects or pet uh, issues that you think he might bring to the forefront that perhaps we have not seen up to this point? I think he made it very clear that um, the city treasurer would be back in his office, that she would participate um, in budget decisions and financial decisions because she's such a part uh, of what we need to accomplish in terms of maintaining our bond rating. Mm -hmm. um, it's the biggest part of our budget at this particular moment, which Councilman Segarra, now Mayor Segarra, I'm sure will spend the majority of his time on, uh, which was our expanding pension costs. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking at, over the next couple of years, a $25 million increase in what we're going to have to 
contribute um, toward our pension and benefits, and that's just something that we really can't maintain. So how we solve that problem um, will require the help of the city treasurer, and Mayor Segarra um, saw that even when he was council president. Right. Jenna, you had um, written this week about uh, about Councilman, what Councilman Kennedy had mentioned about the need, the shift in leadership. There's a lot of vacancies. Um, what are you hearing in terms of how difficult it might be to elect a new council president and, and also to fill that vacancy of now of, of a council member? Right. The, the sense that I've gotten uh, from some people on the council, it seems like it's even a possibility that the vacancy on the council could be filled before the president uh, position is filled. And if that does happen, then that person that would come in and fill that vacancy would have possibly a crucial vote in who takes over as president. So that's, uh, that's going to obviously be a very um, vital pick then. Mm -hmm. and, and you, um, by the time this runs, you will have written an article. Um, there's some names floating around? around? Yep, yep. There's been, uh, you know, different sources have thrown out, you know, uh, Metro Hartford Alliance uh, worker is one of them, mm -hmm. a city attorney, um, just names that are kind of you know, tossed around in circles. Right. Council Kennedy, can you give us any um, background in terms of how uh, aggressive, I guess, the positioning now is for the council president? Um, I will... <laughs> It's aggressive, yes. Yeah. Um, right now, I think uh, the two candidates are being very aggressive in maintaining their support and trying to attract um, uh, the necessary two votes that each of them needs uh, to become uh, council president. Right now, um, I know some people say it's 4-4 and it's just one vote away. Actually, more, it's really 3-3, three, three, uh, three members supporting each candidate and two members um, saying they're going to abstain uh, in this process and they're not prepared to support either candidate at this particular moment. Um, How long can this go on? I mean, don't you want to kind of, I mean, you said you want to present this image of stability and, and moving forward. Well, right now I don't think but we're a week in. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, at that point, I, I, it's not like we're three or four months into this process mm -hmm. and we still haven't picked a leader. Um, we're a week in. Conversations are still ongoing and continuing. And I think at some point in time, um, hopefully maybe before the next council meeting, if not soon thereafter, um, we will be able to pick a new leader. Um, just give us some time to work through this. Council did do the responsible thing. We had selected, when we selected Pedro Segarra, um, Jim Boucher was in line for that position, and we, uh, we shifted, and Jim participated in that process, to saying Pedro would be the best um, mayor if it came to that um, conclusion. The most important qualification the council president is, is that person prepared to be mayor on a moment's notice? Um, and that's a process we have to go through here. Um, we made a uh, decision as a council that we would support Jim Boucher. Mm -hmm. um, that was a commitment. I made that commitment at that time. I'm planning to live up to my word on that commitment mm -hmm. um, as we move forward. Jenna, how um, damaging do you think this uh, whole situation has been for politics in Hartford and, and um, I don't know, for Hartford's image, maybe? Um, well, I think it's, it's kind of in the process of being rebuilt now. So public trust is probably lower than it's been in a while. Um, since I've come on the beat, I have, haven't seen as much outcry as I have now. Mm -hmm. uh, but hopefully, you know, as the council builds itself back up and as the mayor gets more used to being in office, gets up to speed... Uh, already we've seen uh, staffing changes. Right. Just this week, um, Perez announced, or um, Cigar, rather, had announced that he's accepted some letters of resignation right. from city staff members, and uh, new people will file in and the old people will file out. Right. So. And they weren't, right. un they weren't unexpected. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, lots of changes. Um, thanks, both of you, for commenting on it. Don't forget, if you missed something here on The Real Story, you can now watch it online by going to fox61.com. You can also catch us on YouTube. Thanks for watching this week's edition of The Real Story. We'll see you here again next.